My name is Topher Payne, and I am one of the playwrights in Homebrew. All right, so tell me, what will you be presenting? We are presenting a updated version of a play called Angry Fags that we premiered here at Seven Stages in 2013, and now it's getting a fresh new update. And uh, so we're bringing that out, and it's facing its first audience here. So when you're doing an update for a play, kind of what are you thinking that kind of makes it fresh? What are, what are some of the elements that you add to it? Yeah, new? Angry Fags was a uh, political play um, that was kind of presenting the worst case scenario. It was this nightmare vision of American politics that I wrote in 2013. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then the last four years happened and I realized there were some new ideas to explore. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in talking to Heidi, the artistic director at Seven Stages, we got really excited about the idea of revisiting the work with everything we know now. Mm -hmm. Wow, so when you're presenting for a festival like this, how is it gonna be different from what they would normally see on a stage? Um, it's because the focus is truly on the words. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a full-scale production, when you have the, um, the talents of the design team coming in and really considering the full spectacle of staging. Um, but for something like this, it's serving the playwright and getting the story exactly where you want it to be. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So let's just kind of back back a little bit. So tell me how you uh, ended up in Atlanta uh, and, and where you're from and how you ended up here. <laughs> um, I'm from Mississippi mm -hmm. and I came to Atlanta when I was 19 because I was in Mississippi and, <laughs> um, and I wanted to pursue a career in theater and I started knocking on doors all over town and saying basically anything that you need somebody to do, mm -hmm. you know, I'd just lie and say I knew how to do it and then I'd figure it out once I got in the door. <laughs> and so I built sets and I hung lights and I made costumes and but my heart was in playwriting and um, along the way I just kept telling stories and finding people to tell stories with um, and just tried to get better at the gig. <laughs> now, is this something that you always wanted to do or did you kind of fall into it and then decide, you, did you get some formal education or just started doing it? No, I just picked it up on the streets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my mama will tell you that I was going to be a writer from the time I knew how to put pencil to paper. Mm -hmm. And um, it's definitely the way I always figured out the world. Mm -hmm. um, I say that theater, and for me by extension writing, um, is teaching yourself empathy mm -hmm. and teaching yourself compassion, mm -hmm. um, considering another person's perspective and another person's experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm trying to figure something out, mm -hmm. then I tend to go to paper mm -hmm. with it and just try to solve the mystery by looking at the words on the page. And I guess somewhere along there, once I either found an answer I was satisfied with, or at least found a question I was satisfied with, it became something I wanted to share with other people. And that took me into the theater. That's the great part about the arts, you know, you know, the fact that you're giving a piece of yourself to other people, it, it serves as a point of inspiration to us all. Yeah, there are so few silent spaces left where people will sit and listen and not look at a screen. Um, and, you know, it's basically like places of worship and theaters. That's about <laughs> all we have left. And even then, you really have to police them. And, <laughs> and so for someone to give you the gift of their time and their attention, then by God, you better say something and make it worthwhile, you know? Yeah, yeah, we definitely appreciate that as well. So um, I, I know in addition to uh, being a playwright and, and, and writing for, for theater, you also write for television shows. Yes, I do. That's, that's an interesting twist. Kind of tell me how you got into that and, and uh, what's kind of the difference between the two? Um, I, uh, I had a show that went off Broadway a couple of years ago called Perfect Arrangement um, that did really well and out of result of that got to have some meetings in LA with various television networks and just seeing if I wanted to tell stories on a much larger scale. And much to my surprise and eventual delight, I started working for the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> and um, so those 21 days of Christmas that they do every year, I'm at least one of them. Wow. And I tell those gentle romantic Christmas comedies that your mom likes and, oh, cool. and that my mom really likes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've accomplished a lot in my life. Nothing will make her prouder than the Hallmark movies. And and that was the funny thing for me was it was definitely writing in a different genre mm-hmm. than I'd written in before. But the impulse became this uh, became the same thing with any of my plays applying to TV as well. It's what story do you want to tell and who are you telling the story to? Yeah. Is it harder or more difficult for you to kind of write in that genre knowing that when you do th- theater, you have a little bit more freedom to kind of, you know, write a play like Angry Fags, whereas it's the Hallmark. It's easier because I know I have theater. Okay. If I didn't have theater, then, then I would have a lot of creative impulses that I wouldn't, it'd be an itch I don't get to scratch. Um, <laughs> But that's the beauty of it. You know, the first Hallmark movie I had uh, premiered last summer, and on that night, six million people saw that story. Wow. And that was more than the sum total of every <laughs> living human being that had ever seen something I'd written for the stage <laughs> in one night, you know? And so there are, because you're speaking to a larger audience like that, um, it does affect certain aspects of the storytelling, for sure, absolutely, and it's commercial television. You know, you've got to do something that, that you can have coffee commercials between. Right. Um, I like the challenge of that, and I can embrace the challenge of that, because I know when I get back in a theater, I can go wild and do whatever I want. Right. <laughs> wow, what a nice way to um, kind of feed both senses of your creativity. <laughs> exactly, and then, you know, and it... You know, and because of that subversive streak, absolutely, I find little ways that I can drop things into a Hallmark movie uh, that, you know, are just for me. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Do you, do you throw a little tidbit in there? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. My last one had a Furioso reference that I still don't think the executives even knew what the character was talking about. Yeah. And that's cool. I got Furiosa in a Hallmark movie. Wow. Oh, that's cool. So is that something you want to do more of, or you kind of like the balance that you, you have with the theater and the um, I love the balance, right? You know, I've been looking, I spent 20 years trying to find a way to support my playwriting habit and, and having the chance to spend my life telling stories and telling such an amazing variety of stories um, really feels like the payoff of a lot of work that I put into that down payment. And um, so I'm pretty excited just to have the chance to wake up each morning and not know what the next story is going to be. Well, I'm happy for you. Uh, Thank you. That the fact that a creative get to live their dreams and support themselves at the same time. In Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> Without moving to LA or New York, right? Exactly. In the age of Skype and conference calls, it's amazing what you can accomplish and not be in the room with them. And um, that wasn't something that was true for me as an Atlanta writer when I first came to town. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the beautiful evolution of Atlanta becoming more of a film community um, and the influx of talent that our theater community has benefited from by having those talents come into town and our theater community offering ready-made talent for the film and so Atlanta is a really really great place to be creating right now. Oh that's awesome so you've been able to see the growth of the scene from um, several years back to now where it's kind of thriving. From what are you nuts to (laughs) we make Marvel movies yeah it's pretty cool. I guess that's kind of going back to this particular festival. That's kind of like the benefit of having a festival like this where you showcase some of the talent here. Yeah, the number one thing that defines whether or not a creative community can survive and thrive is if people stay. Mm -hmm. That's the simple thing, if your talent stays. Um, And if your talent is willing to make an investment in the community and the community is willing to make the investment back. And things like homebrew, are an opportunity for audiences to engage in the earliest stages of that process Mm -hmm. and really take ownership of something that's being created here. Mm -hmm. So that when it does go off to LA or Chicago or New York or they make it into a movie, you have the satisfaction of knowing that it exists because you were willing to give your time and attention to the piece in the first place. Well, there you go. Make sure you go out and support the the arts. You may be giving a first look at some uh, future television show, maybe on Hallmark Channel. Exactly. Probably not for the Hallmark. (laughs) You never know. You never know. Well, thank you for joining us. If people want to follow you or uh, kind of see what you're up to, how can they do so? I am on Twitter at Topher Payne, T-O-P-H-E-R-P-A-Y-N-E, and on Instagram at Topher Writes.
and how can they check out your upcoming performance here at the Seven Stages of Win? They can see it on Saturday, November 18th at 2 p.m.